I'm not what I think I am. I'm not what you think I am. I am what I think you think I am. So we live in this perception of a perception of ourselves. Hence, my identity is made by what my parents think I should be. My identity is made up by what my college or university thinks I should achieve. While you're living in that bubble and that echo chamber, getting to what you really want to do is impossible. Because maybe that just doesn't fit. And I think so many people feel that way today, that they don't fit into the current education system. They don't fit with the three or four or five careers that you're taught exist. So that process of self-excavation and actualization first requires being exposed. You can't be what you can't see. If I never saw a monk, I would never have wanted to be a monk. If I never meet a billionaire, I wouldn't want to be one because I wouldn't know what that feels like. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it takes. And, and I think that's the biggest challenge of our society, that we're not exposed. You're not trying to get to perfection right now. You're just trying to get a little bit better than you were yesterday or an hour ago. Strengths are not highly correlated with long-term success, right? There's not a lot of data and there is not a lot of research that has shown it leads to long-term success with the positive outcomes uh, associated with what we care about in psychology, which is we care about happiness, we care about health, and we care about your positive relationships. And this myth that, oh, we just follow our strengths to, you know, to the promised land is just not true when you actually talk with high performers. Because my, my favorite question, and, and if anyone's down this, just go up to anyone who's good and say, were you always good at that? And they'll be like, no. They'll be like, not at all. Like, well, did you always have an inclination to do every element of do, what you're doing really well? No. An ideal life is when we all have a head, a heart, and a hand, all three elements together. Well, head is the clarity of vision. What you want. What you want. Knowing what you want, the way you picture life, and being able to navigate and make the decisions to get there. That's a good head. A good heart is being able to understand what your intuition and heart wants. Being able to connect and tap into that understanding deeper and beyond the vision you may have painted for yourself. So I often say to people that you'll get to where you want in life, just not in the way you imagined. And that's because the path that's paved up and down is far different to the path we pave. So you can have a great head and a great vision and a great mission and know where you want to go. But if your heart's not able to have that resilience and be able to adapt and, and have compassion and care and all of that, then, then you're not going to be able to make the toughest decisions without your heart. But to be able to realize that we need to care and be sustainable and long-lasting requires a heart and a hand is that service wanting to pass that on that which you have wanting to give it forward pay it forward the idea of serving with what you have I often say to people your passion is for you your purpose is for others your passion makes you happy but when you use your passion to make a difference in someone else's life that's a service that's a purpose Oftentimes people go, okay, here's really what I want to do, and this is what I'm trying to accomplish. And then they see all these other things that other people are doing, and then they, they kind of see that as like a grab bag, and they're like, and I want a little of this, and a little of this, and a little of this, and I want it all at the same time. And that's not really possible, you know? You can't play five sports at the same time. You gotta pick one, you gotta specialize. Maybe you can do two, but you probably can't do five, right? You can't be a classical musician and a rock star, you know, and this and this all at the same time. So it's about sort of picking your lane. And then knowing that some, some goals are mutually exclusive. Uncertainty is scary. New information is scary. Change is scary. And everyone has a different way of handling that. I will pivot when necessary. I'm like, oh, no, uh, dead end, whoop. Like, you know, do what you gotta do. And I will, I, I can take new information and adjust the plan immediately and have no qualms about it and just move, move, move. And the way to balance that is that outside of work, I really like things to be stable. You need to have that pull that you can go back to when everything looks crazy that you can reach out to, to hold on to. And if I didn't have that, I think I'd be much more afraid of chaos. 
And when someone actually asks and, and kind of owns that, like when they say, do I want to make an impact? And the answer is yes, and they own it. They realize they're going to have to develop. They can no longer leave their growth to, medi you know, to, to, to randomness. Because if they do, they'll always be mediocre. And they realize, I got to become something entirely above both of those. That's what most people don't see. They're like, it, it's, we've made this binary false conversation, right? It, it's, a, it, it's, it's not a true sort of choice here. It's a false dichotomy, we call it, right? It's not strengths or weaknesses. Many of you, if you have a big dream, a huge goal, you got to become something entirely above and beyond any strengths you even know about, feel, or own, and go way beyond any weaknesses you've ever even addressed or even you know about, because you're going to discover so many new strengths and so many new weaknesses on the path that it's almost irrelevant what they are now. It's what's the goal and build into that. What am I good at? What do I love? What does the world need? And how do I get paid for it? To me, those four help you unlock your passion. When you find the intersect across all of those four, you're making your passion your purpose. You'll unlock your passion, you'll find your purpose. This is path one, there's two paths. Path one, I find my skill set and I engage it to help other people and become better at it. So I'm becoming better at what I'm good at and I'm using it to help other people because I'm aware of what I'm quite good at and I know what, what knowledge I have, what skills I have. I have some self-awareness. The other path that people often miss is actually I just start serving people. I just start helping people and I start to notice what I enjoy about that and what I'm good at helping people with. So that's Gandhi's part. Gandhi said that you find yourself when you lose yourself in the service of others. So for me, those are the two paths of how do I find my passion and finding the intersect between those four areas. The question I ask clients the most is like, what does success look like for you on this project? And I get them to really describe it to me and let's say there's more than one thing in there. I go, now if you could only pick one of those things and the other ones didn't happen, which one would you pick? And I'm trying to get them to sift through some of that conflict so we can really hone in on what we're trying to do. And oftentimes, I, where ego comes in is like, we've got the things that impress other people and then the real meaningful impact that we're trying to have. And oftentimes, I'm not saying that the, the status things aren't nice and they're not, they, they're not impressive and they're not cool, but we've got to make sure that they're not coming at the expense of those other things. So motivation is a word, right? It's, it's, a, it's a label that we put a set of events in our brain. Uh, what you actually want is the outcome of that. You want to do things that when, you, when it's hard. So I think that there are a few kind of things that, that we know work. One is uh, evidence of past successes. If I simply when I go back to your memories and I reframe them as successes, suddenly they suddenly the current event that's the same is a success. So I think that one one thing is like having success stories and identification stories. As in you find, there's a lot of people out there. There was a person that is like you, that had similar experience and chose the thing that you want to choose. Find this person or these people and it's going to rub into you. So I, I get asked by my students often, how do I become funnier? How do I become <laughs> a smarter? And, and like my one tip that I give them all the time is surround yourself by people that you want to be like. Do you remember that first personal development book you read? Do you remember that first time you wrote tons of notes about what you wanted your life to be about? Do you remember that first time you watched a movie that inspired you to go change? There was fire there because that learning, it, it opened up your mind to a new level of existence for you. And as soon as you saw it, you were like, ooh, ambition hits your heart. And now if you can match it with contribution and you can see how that passion or that fire or that learning or that growth all aligns to some type of impact, now you're getting me fired up because now I can see the outcome of all the work. A lot of people don't do the work because they don't believe the outcome. That's interesting. You know, if uh, in psychologists talk about the power of expectancy, um, when we talk about motivation, there's only two things that spark motivation. One is ambition, and that is I want more of or I want a greater depth of, right? I want a greater depth of, of connection with my lady, that's ambition. Or I want a, a better meditative practice, that's ambition. Right? I, want, I want to be better at my job, that's ambition. So it starts with ambition. But ambition, if it's not coupled with what they call expectancy in psychology, you're screwed. Expectancy says, I believe that I can figure that out. I believe that I can achieve that. 
I believe that that is possible for me. And if you can open that gate for somebody, and often that's only achieved through learning, then you get somebody who starts really moving ahead forward. I mean, really moving ahead. Like the second they go, wait, that's possible for me? They'll try 50 stupid things, right? They'll, they'll try anything. But if they don't believe it's possible for them, they'll just quit. There's an incredible study in 2017 that said the most successful people in the world, healthy, wealthy, and wise, choose education over entertainment.